Hey everybody, Brian Fleischman again with another Java tutorial. Today I'd like to talk about the printf method and how it can be useful when you're printing output onto a console that needs to be organized. Come up with a kind of a silly example of uh, four dogs, four different names, four different ages, four different weights that are determined randomly between 0 and 20 that will be stored as a double, very precise value. Um, if we want to print this information out in a table, one might think, here we go, I'm going to make some column titles um, and then just print out each name, age, and weight concatenated and see how that works out. You may see there's going to be a couple of problems right away. Some of the names are really long, some of them are really short. In addition, these weights are very precise and we'll see that the printf method in string formatting uh, can tackle all of those challenges very easily. So let's go ahead and run this here and see what we get. All right, so this is not what we were looking for. It was a good try, um, but we can see here that you know nothing is really lined up like we want it to. Weights are way too precise. So let's talk about string formatting in the printf method. So before we actually get into particular examples and talking about what each formatting specifier means, I need to give you a concrete example that you will not understand when you first look at it, but we'll, that I will explain in detail after we get the output. So we can see the printf method takes two parameters. Format is going to be a string literal or a string variable that contains special sequences called format specifiers. You'll see what those look like in just a second. Format specifiers are later to be replaced by particular uh, arguments that go here that are going to kind of fill out our table. So let's just look at one that's not going to have to do with our table first, just as an example. Um, and that's going to be like mm, this. Now, of course, you don't know what this means yet, but let me just kind of like give you an example of an output and then we'll see if we can kind of figure out what's happening here. When we print this, we get... Oh, okay. So this number, very similar to this number, is printed down here, and it kind of has some space off to the side. So let's look at this here. Remember when I said that inside the argument format, this first thing needs to be a string containing format specifiers. All format specifiers begin with a percentage sign. right? Much like escape sequences begin with backslashes, format specifiers begin with a percentage sign. The next number is going to be the width of the field that the variable would be printed in. So eight, you can see here that there are eight spaces available for this argument to be printed in. By default, Java will push off the argument to the far right side of the field. I'll teach you how to push it off to the left in just a second. It's not that hard. For numbers that are decimals, we'll see that this tells Java how far to round the decimal. Point 0.3 means Round three places past the decimal, please. Right. So let's take a look. Three places past the decimal, and it'll look to the right, and it will see a four, and it will not round the eight up. Let's just kind of show you that it really does truly round the number. It doesn't just truncate it. Right. We can kind of see here. I'm going to run this again. I changed that number, and look at this. Instead of 5.438 truncated, it is 5.439, and that's because Java actually does round the number. So you can think of this as rounding. Okay, so, so far we've learned that all format specifiers must begin with a percentage. The number after it determines the field space and the alignment. For numbers that include decimals, this tells Java how far to round the decimal. And then the F is the data type. We haven't talked much about that. This In this case, F stands for float. We'll deal with a couple more here. I want you to also see that it's not necessarily the case that the, that the string here needs to be just... Um, format specifiers, right? You can have some other string literal that will show up here and this format specifier will be replaced with this argument. Let's take a look. There you go, right? So we can kind of see how it, this is gonna be really helpful for our table. Before moving on, let's talk about some other format specifiers and how predictable they are to look at. Okay, so all format specifiers begin with a percentage. Next comes the field space and alignment. Positive numbers will align right Negative numbers will align the content to the left. So simply, if we wanted this aligned to the left, I would have just said negative 8 instead. And we can see that that number would be pushed off to the left of its field space, and there it is. For floats only, the number after the decimal specifies rounding to that many digits. Okay, so this one, 3 means round that number to the for three decimal places. Then comes the data type. F is float. We'll see there's a couple more down here. S stands for string, 
And D stands for decimal number. And actually the best way to think about this is not really a decimal in the case that like you understand it from math class. It's an integer. Okay, you can think of Ds as integers. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and just simplify that for you. D is a number or an integer. Okay, so if we wanna replace something with a number, we use D. S, we use string. And for floats, we use F. Okay, so let's take a look at these and see if we can decode them. Format specifier with field space of five, right? So it's gonna be five wide and it's gonna be filled with a number and it'll be pushed off to the right since this number is positive. Let's just pick a couple more of these. How about this one? Uh, this field space is 10, but the content will be pushed off to the left. This is going to be a float number rounded to two decimal places. How about this one? Uh, this is a field space of 10. It's going to be aligned to the left of the field space and it'll be a string going in there. All right, and I also want you to know that there can be much more than just one, one formatting specifier inside the string. You can have as many as you like, as long as you follow it up with continued arguments on what you uh, want to replace those format specifiers with. Okay, so let's build our table real quick, see if we can beat the clock here. I only have 10 minutes per lesson. Let's go ahead and try this. Let's create a, a let's, I'm gonna go ahead and back up here and, and you know go over my general strategy. Rather than filling up this first parameter with a string literal every time, I'm going to store a string variable that's gonna contain our format for every line that we wanna print. So I'm gonna start building that, that format called, uh, that string called format. And what I'd like it to do is I want the first one to be a name and this, this person's name here, I don't know how long that is, but it looks really long. I think it must be like, you know, like 30 or 40, I don't know. I'm just kind of eyeballing it. So I want to hold a, a string maybe that's gonna be like 40 wide and I'd like them to align to the left. And I just put S there, right? And I can follow up this, this string formatting with another format specifier right away, okay? So take a look here. The next one I want to be is ages, right? Ages don't need that much space, but just for the sake of the table, let's make it like, I don't know, six wide, okay? And I'd like a line to the left, and it's just a number, so it's gonna be a D. And then right after that, I'd like another variable that's going to be a float number. Uh, how wide do we need for weights? Let's round the weights to like, you know, a couple of decimals. So maybe we only need like, you know, six spots for the weight. I'm going to align it to the left by using a negative number. And let's, let's round to two decimals. Okay. And then you'll notice though um, that much like the print method, um, there is no new line that comes at the end of it. So let's at the end of every line, we have to kind of like tell Java that we want a new line. And I'm going to use the escape sequence backslash n. Okay. So it's going to, we're going to replace all of these. We're going to replace this with a string this with a number, this with a decimal number, and then we'll go to a new line. Okay, so now we can call the printf method. Okay, and I've named conveniently named my formatting string format, so I don't have to actually type that in. Now, what are the arguments in the order that we want to replace them? All right, so let's do um, let's do our our top row here. Name. All right, I'm going to just do this top row here. Name, comma, and then. Hmm, actually, you know what, let's do, let's just do the, the actual particular dogs and we'll deal with this in just a second, okay? Uh, let's do the particular dogs. Let's do name one will be the first, age one will be the second argument, and weight one will be the third. Okay, we'll see now if we take this same printf statement, copy it, paste it a couple times, and change these to the other dogs, names, and weights, and then print, Let's see what we get here. Let's see if you can kind of change these really fast. All right, let's see what we get. Hey, that looks much better, much better. Okay, so let's just take a look at what we did. The printf statement takes um, a format string, right? This could be a string literal. I could have literally had this in, copied and pasted into each of these first spots. And Java is waiting for a string it's waiting for a number and it's waiting for a float, okay? And there they are. I'm gonna give you, here's the string I want you to put in that first spot. Here's the number I want you to put in the second. And here is the decimal number I want you to put in the third, right? All right? Maybe we can just do also, um, you know, in, in another tutorial, talk about how you can actually make these field spaces variable. Um, and that might be really useful for unpredictable in input. Uh, anyways, happy coding and I'll see you in a future video.